Live from Duluth, Minnesota, comes Take It With You, an all-original live radio theater podcast. Yes, it's the golden age of radio, but without the age or the radio, it's just gold. Just add a couple zeros to my checking account. This life is just a golden opportunity. Something about those greenbacks, I can't tell you what they do to me. I don't need legs, I don't need rigs, I don't need jewelry. And you might be thinking to yourself, What's happening now? I'm gonna shoot you if you don't fork over the fucking cash! Cutting edge sound effects and storylines that make you feel alive. And so, Billy that kid washed away the remnants of his wet dream in the river, while the rest of the gang made a hearty ham breakfast. Damn. And speaking of ham, our show is filled with insights about a variety of animals, both alive and delicious. Now, the thing about bats is that they're kind of a tarantula bird hybrid dreamed up by the Visigoths. But we don't just talk about animals. You'll fall in love with the characters, too, in the lush world our writers have created for you as we address meaningful issues of the day. Hey, but mostly it's just more animals. A gorilla that has two penguins growing out of its neck that can both shoot bolts of lightning through their mouths. A shark that's had its teeth removed but can still come at you pretty fast. <laughs> Although Gracie can spit flawless dope rhymes as hard as we try, we're having too much fun not to fuck up from time to time, but we'll fix it in post. It's my line. It is your line. <laughs> we also address 21st century sexual norms in a super classy way. Well, that's incredibly misogynistic, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, I'm super massage optimistic, too. <laughs> Do you think anyone here would give me a massage? Jesus Christ. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll slap your knee, tap your toe, and take it with you. Hi, my name is Tony Cuneo. I'm the executive director here at the Zeitgeist Center for Arts and Community, and thank you so much for joining this performance. If you don't know Zeitgeist, we are a nonprofit arts and community development organization located in downtown Duluth, and we are fighting for social change, the kind of social change that builds creative, sustainable, inclusive communities that we can all be proud of. And this performance is a big part of accomplishing that goal. It's been a really hard time for artists through COVID. Uh, trying to get in front of people and, and earn a living is very difficult uh, during a pandemic. And so this performance, Coming at you from the Zeitgeist Performance Theater, the Teatro Zaccone, is a big part of continuing to support artists in our community, which is a big part of who we are at Zeitgeist. So any contributions you make tonight will go directly to support uh, the artists in tonight's performance and will go to support uh, artists in this community. And just so you know, uh, we've taken a number of precautions in the Performance Theater, including social distancing and sanitation to ensure that the performance is happening in as safe an environment as possible so you can feel good about making those contributions. Thank you so much, enjoy the performance. We hope to see you back in our theaters as soon as possible. We cannot wait to have people back in our building again. Until then, this is the best we can do and we will make the best of it. Thanks so much. Imagine a world, a world where Zeitgeist no longer exists. Uh, actually, let's not. So things look a little different now, that's for sure, but we're no stranger to change. For the past 10 years, yep, 10 hard-earned years, 
we have been working with and for our community to realize a shared vision of what a connected, creative, and thriving future can look like. Change is the name of our game. Zeitgeist is a unique organization, and our ambition and our scope is big. It's not about any one issue or any one art form or any one environmental project. It's about a vision for the way our community works and what we prioritize. We know we are a stronger community when we invest in artists and celebrate the diverse cultures of the people who live here. We know we are a stronger community when we ensure that every resident, regardless of background, has a voice in shaping our shared future. We know we are a stronger community when we care enough about our environment to adopt systems and policies that protect it. And we know we are a stronger community when we get to know each other as people, building new connections, breaking bread together, and exploring ideas. We believe in these as the core values that should define our community. And that's our goal here, to use our programming to shape the zeitgeist, the spirit of who we are. Our work has shifted to reflect the needs of this community, and our work will continue to shift to meet those needs. What we do is unbroken by politics or pandemics. At Zeitgeist, we do what we do because we know that our future can and will be shaped by those willing to show up. So yes, do things look different right now? Sure. But our work will continue because we will continue to show up and our commitment to you, this community, is as strong as ever. Edgy, new, artsy, exciting, freeing, cathartic. Zeitgeist is a community space, and I've really felt that here today. We are live. Uh, welcome, friends. Hang on, I don't have a host tonight. So I'm doing everything by myself. Uh, we're back with another Rent Party, live here with Lila Abukader and George Pooks Rodinovich. Which, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Singer songwriter, she's going to do a whole bunch of original stuff with George on his custom cajon. Uh, I'm super excited to hear that and learn more about it. We just had an amazing meal from Gumbo Boy. Uh, we will be talking a bit about that more coming up. Mm -mm. What so else? Good. What else do I need to say? Um. Oh, if you want to donate to the stream, that is uh, at this Streamlabs uh, address. I'll put up on screen in a second. Let's get into music. I don't. I don't need to talk. Yeah. Ready, George? Yeah, I'm ready, Lila.
was called down <laughs> thank you thank you this zeitgeist place is awesome i haven't been here since i saw lizzie borden um that play and my friend dalen moore was freaking awesome with freaking acts it was awesome so shout out to zeitgeist and all my friends who've been here before and performed here before Seriously. shout out to joe shout out to nick for putting this all together thank you so much yeah, thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. I know this space has produced so much good content over the years. Not only the Teatro Sukune, but the whole zeitgeist in general. So really appreciate being able to play for you guys here in this space. It's been a sad building, man. Hanging out here without music and art and people. Mm -hmm. It's Tough no times. good. It's no good. Mm -hmm. I just taste the palm fritas in my mouth. Mm -hmm. But for everyone who's, you know, tuning in, uh, hopefully the comfort of their own homes, we really appreciate you and hopefully provide you with a little bit of entertainment for the night. Yeah, we'll do our best. We do our best. If we screw up, we screw up. We Stay yeah. safe and remember our artists. How many shows have you guys missed since, what, March? Uh, like, how, how often would you normally play? Well, George and I started playing together in during COVID. Okay. Yeah, we actually met May mm -hmm. uh, as far as getting together to try to play. And one of the blessings of this whole thing was us coming together and to play. You know, we got lucky to do a couple of shows mm -hmm. around town, outside, in COVID-conscious places like the Earth Rider. We had a show at Glen Sheen. Shout out Earth Rider. Yeah, shout out Earth Rider. <laughs> Probably one of the better spaces for uh, having COVID. So appreciate you guys having us there. But we are one of the lucky ones. I know so many artists, uh, local artists that are struggling. You know, they've used not only uh, shows as part of their income, but just as part of their social uh, mm -hmm. venues. That and is huge. you know, it's huge. You know, we're we're humans that need uh, people. You know, we're yeah. not meant to be by ourselves. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's been hard on a lot of people. It's been hard on everyone. Yeah. I was saying this to you yesterday. It's been hard on the whole entire world. Everyone is struggling right now, mm -hmm. you know, no matter and where you come from. And I'm so grateful to be here. Like, we've been playing these shows together, and I've, I've written so much. So I'm so grateful for the live streams, for the residency shows that we've been playing. I think we probably have played about 10 shows yeah, together. Yeah, we're probably close to 10, that. 10, 11. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah and, like... We just kind of like vibing off of each other's spirit, which is just so refreshing. So yeah, yeah, we definitely been so fun. feed off each other, and I really appreciate your music and letting me be a part of it, Lila. So yeah, George, thank thanks you. for being here, man. That's thank a good spin on it. We got to find opportunity in this shit show of the world. So yeah, That's you guys right. gave it to us. So I thank have a you. theater, and the theater director has a commercial kitchen, and you have a live stream. Yes. So What's I'm going to I'm going to play a song I wrote during COVID. It's called Crazy Eyes. And I think everyone's probably gotten some crazy eyes during this time. So I hope you like it. <laughs>
otherwise you've got nothing That was called Crazy Eyes. One of my COVID creations. I also um, have a COVID cat that is from COVID. You adopt cats when you're sad and it makes you happier. So leading into that, I would love, 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 love to dedicate this song to Raymond, my little black cat.
love you, Raymond. And I love you, Roxy. And I love you, Ricky. Shout yeah. out to all the cats. All the cats all and the cool Charmaine. Cats. Narum at uh, 2104 just made a donation to us. No oh, way! Richard! What a sweet. I one. love you, Richard. That was what our, our first virtual show was over at 2104 a couple months ago. Yeah. You can still find the YouTube link on that. Uh, what a fun experience that was. Did you Amazing. have a meal as well? Absolutely. That's usually as, a thing, as right? As per tradition. Yeah. Very cool. Also, let me add a couple notes here. Cheyenne says, love you guys. Sounds great. Uh, my sister. My sister. sister. Shout out. My sister. I, see, I see an Isaac and Daniel. That's Danielle. Daniel. <laughs> sorry, my Danielle. dad calls her Danielle, too. Or Daniel. <laughs> Dancing in the living room, smiley face. Yes. Oh, killing it. Killing Danielle, it. if you're out there, guess what? My dad sometimes calls you Daniel. He calls my best friend Julia Julio, too, so, like, don't worry. And there's a mug, and I was going to get it for you. It said Daniel, but I didn't. And now the surprise is wrecked. <laughs> or is it? I got you a better present anyway, so. Cheers to you. Cheers to anyone who's listening. Yeah, thanks again, everyone tuning in. Um, this song is called My Love Don't Love the Same Way. Mm -hmm. This year mm -hmm. has been not so, but I think last year was more not so. I hated it. That's a dream of mine, but I can almost taste it. Yeah. And you just look at me this funny way. Hey, I gotta say, you better try it, and try. It. I think I want to do the new one, especially if my brother's watching, because it's dedicated to him. Mm, nice, 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 nice. Mm -hmm. But I knew I'd have to do it. 
I mean, it's really new, so. It's like, I wrote this three days ago, so let's do our best. <clears throat> I scream, I scream about a special dream where I'm surrounded by a couple few hundred in a beach that's pretty flooded. But I can't take it up run until I start to float away. And if I see you, I still won't stay. So watch out, you say this. Nothing here for you today. Get out. I grew up on Coheed and Cambria, so I was trying to channel that. <laughs> Sweet. I love you, Isaac. Oh, Mom and Dad are here. Mom and Dad are here, too? Mom. Yep. It, there were no spaces in it, so it's tough to read. And, and thank you, Mom and Dad, for sorting your way through our, our strange donation system. <laughs> it's tough. Here's the thing, it asks you for a username, but people don't know you don't actually need a username. I saw that, I saw that on the website. Off, basically. Yeah, uh, you know, it's made for gamers. Ah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah, uh, it's a whole cool, thing. Cool, 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 cool. We're gonna start a hotline, though, I think. I'm just gonna get a- Hotline win. Get, yes. a, get a big ringing phone at my desk <laughs> that'll interrupt everybody. And big red phone. Why not? Have the chart that kinda has the little thermometer that you're trying to hit to the top. Yep. Brilliant! Next to you, you can scribble it in. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi, Lella's Mom and Dad. I don't know if my other brother's listening. I don't know if my other brother's listening, but congrats to him on his marriage. And um, congrats on getting land in upstate New York. They live in New York, and they just bought some land, too. And they're gonna have like a real wedding once COVID's done. And I kind of wrote this song revolving around their love and my love and my love, Nikki, and like their love, Samra and Alex. You guys are so sweet. So I'm so excited for y'all. So this song's called Tomorrow, Delaware River. Because their new land's right by Delaware River. <laughs> I 
brother Samer got to see me play for the first time this summer at Hammerland Nursery and it was me, Gavin, St. Clair, and Ingeborg. Mwah! I love you guys. I miss you guys. Um, we played this like storytelling thing. It was so much fun. So At a nursery for trees? Or a nur what? Like a flower nursery. Okay. Yeah. yeah and it's an ESCO. Jody Cohen kind of arranged it with a few other people. John and few other people too, John Rembold. Um, yeah, great people. It was the best show. It was like right before COVID got like really, really, really shitty and we were all safe outside, but it was just the most beautiful night and like one of my favorite memories of summer. So thanks to them for that. Every show that I get to do right now is such a blessing. So it truly is. it's like, ah, thank you.
I'll be so patient Waiting on you Waiting on me now Waiting on you now Waiting on me now Waiting on you now Waiting on me now Waiting on you now Waiting on me now Oh, with my basement I'll be so That song was called Basement, and I actually wrote it about my parents' basement. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, it's, there's much to it, but... Oh, it's Do we want to get into that here? Um, Is it pretty... No, probably not that one. Basement songs are dark. Well, yeah, there's a few songs that I've written about my parents' house. It's so nostalgic, and there's those few songs, those few memories, I should say, that make you think of different memories, like you think of your your family's house that you grew up in, or at least I do, and like with certain, certain, certain memories, I like picture, my parents have this big like wooden house, looks like a cabin, and they have these big windows. So when I sing that song, I think about looking out those windows, and then I also think about like the stairs that go down to the basement there's like this wall right after the stairs and it's like you walk down the stairs and there's this wall, like straight this wall. And you have to walk back downstairs and like that, the smells of the basement like just remind well, you of things, right? Right. And then like, then something sparks and then, I don't know, this song is. Hey, those are nostalgic memories too. Those are memories about growing yeah. up and uh, they're ingrained in our DNA. Yeah, and this this song, Basement, like, <laughs> it's called Basement, it has nothing to really do about the basement, but, like, there's certain things that have happened, like, last year, a couple years ago, that just kind of, like, remind me of that wall, like, just, like, you walk down, you're stuck, like, you're stuck, and you smell that weird basement smell, and, like, even though it has nothing to do with the basement, and you, you just still feel like you're in a frickin' basement, <laughs> you know? Even though I love that basement, but yeah, just I don't know. Yeah. Shout out to all the parents. Shout out to us not living in our parents' basement. Yeah, we're crushing it here. And if you are, that's I've okay. never slept in the basement, <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Hey, let's have uh, dessert after this next tune. Is that okay. cool? Yeah, 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 yeah. We at seven forty-five. A little praline. We praline. say praline. What do you say, Robert? Well, you said praline. 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 Now, we That's what I do. <laughs> hey, you know, I took a peek on it. I don't know if you're supposed to. Oh, man, it looks so good. Mm. Mm. Um, so just because it's Friday, I'm going to play a song called Monday Night, and we can all be like, ah, fuck Monday Night together because it's Friday, right? Yeah. This song's called Monday Night, You Suck.
You know, it's a bit hot. Thanks for asking. Coming the light on me. Yeah. yeah. I can put a GoPro on myself, though, too, so we both feel awkward. Maybe I'll superimpose it. Yeah, that's the so shot. Just, is it my talk? So, Gumbo Boy. Hey. I have a theater and you have a kitchen. Tell me about how this crazy... Uh, tell me about yourself, first of all, and, and then Gumbo Boy and how all of this chaos turned into a cool little opportunity. Yeah, um, so I, um, I work for the Duluth Playhouse. I run the Underground Theater, but not right now. <laughs> 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 right, yeah, yeah, the womp womps happened to us all, yeah. So I've been furloughed and kind of in the you know, what do I do with my life? Kind of existential crisis. Everybody familiar? Yeah. yeah. We're on the same page. <laughs> um, 
But I, you know, I love, I've always loved to cook, so I started to kind of practice the recipes that um, I either kind of have made before or just weren't familiar with at all of, you know, Louisiana cuisine. Where I'm from, I'm from Louisiana. Should have started with that, I guess. And we should have brought the sign. There's a lot of things we should have done, but it's, oh. it's cool. I have a sign, a little sandwich board <laughs> that has my website, which is gumboboy.com. B O I Gumbo Boy B O I. So I I still like even today have had the conversation about like how it works with COVID, right? How do you get a meal from Gumbo Boy? Uh, yeah, the, the Friday Monday thing. Yeah, so uh, yeah, my goal was to make it easy and all online, and I don't say this publicly. Well, I guess until now. I really just don't want to talk to the customers. So this has like been perfect. They, they order online, they show up at the door, somebody asks them their name, and then they get handed their food. And you just go and you enjoy the food. So all the meals them. are online. I only do uh, one meal per offering. So I do every Friday. I'm not doing Christmas, sorry. Um, and then I do some Mondays as well. On Mondays, I do sandwiches. So Monday night could be better. Could, could not better. suck so bad suck if you get a po' boy. Yeah. I like that. So um, yeah, you just go online. It's actually a really slick website that Justin Peck helped me make. Uh, Justin watches these things. I'm pointing at the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. Justin was here last week. Oh, okay. Uh, in, the, in the isolation booth we've, yes. we've set up. Yes, and he mentioned that, he was like, they're talking about Gumbo Boy. I was like, I know, I set this up. <laughs> um, okay. Because Joe's in here in the theater and I've been in the kitchen on the other side of those walls, and we're like, why not? Strange times. Tell us about what you did. What, we all kind of just inhaled what was in front of us tonight. I did a jambalaya. What, uh, what does that mean? Jambalaya. Uh, means lots of different things to different people. I make mine the way you would find people making it, like at a tailgate game, at an SEC football game on a Saturday night. So it's in a big pot. It's a rice dish. So you kind of cook a bunch of meats and spices together with the rice. It's actually a, an intense process, even though it's a pretty simple dish, but. Uh, most of what I make, including the jambalaya, is kind of party food for Louisiana. Things you would make a big batch of and a bunch of people can come around. And is it regular, it. though, that they don't? I mean, everything you do seems to be very intensive, like making your own stock and, and whatnot. Yeah, well, I mean, so I put a lot of work into it. Yeah, so I make my own stock and I make my own bread and I make uh, I roast my own garlic for the garlic butter. and I just mm. do it all. Garlic butter. Mm -hmm. How can you mess that up? But I spend way too much time on it because I like to roast the garlic and I squeeze it out of the things and it's like a mm. gooey Beautiful. gel thing by the time it's roasted and you blend it with the butter. We need to do some live stream ASMR over there. Yeah, bring it over, up? set it up. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, a big important thing for me was like to learn how to make the French bread correctly before I could do po' boys because in New Orleans it's a very specific kind of French bread. It's very soft, kind of chewy, very thin crust. So once I got that down, I knew I had something. I will say, yeah, the bread's been uh, very regular, very good. Thank you. Yeah. I, Consistent, I should I say. got it I'm down, ready. and they've got a great convection oven. Great for cooking lots of bread at once. Um, so we had, we had a hell of a meal, and, and I thought it'd be a great idea to have our artists eat their, not that you're not an artist, to have our performing artists eat some. <laughs> did you already eat your dessert? I already did. Oh, Gee. shit. It's Pro really uh, freaking yummy. Yeah, pralines are, they're very sweet. Uh, I mean, it's just sugar and butter. Caramelized. Yeah, it's caramelized kind of butter and sugar, and it's got pecans. It's a very, very traditional New Orleans kind of treat, candy dessert. Ooh, hold that shot. That's great, George. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's it's a bunch of caramelized Sorry. sugar and butter over we pecans. We got a nice overlay shot going. If you could rotate it, that'd be I've great. never even had pecan pie. Pecan. 
<laughs> pecan. No, uh, it's so it's hard to find up here. It, uh, pecans are expensive. They're even mm -hmm. expensive in Louisiana where they grow. But up here, it's like, I'll tell you, pecans are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so how can we support Gumbo Boy? Hey, just buy some food. I I'll do I'll make it delicious for you. I go to gumboboy.com. Um that's gumbo b o i .com. Um I got a bunch of meals. Uh, all the meals are listed out with the dates next to them. Uh you pick a date, you get that meal. I don't really do any alterations. It's all delicious. Just trust me. Um best $20 I've spent. Like, yeah, seriously, it's, it's crazy. 20 bucks. I get a salad, I, dessert, and it's fresh bread, all of it. I, it's, it's plenty like of food. Filling. Yeah, I, uh, I keep my costs down because I do everything myself, and so I want to keep everything at 20 bucks. Um, I do rotate. One week I'll do a meat dish, and the next week I'll do a pescatarian dish. So when I do seafood, it's fully pescatarian, and mm -hmm. when I serve a side with a seafood dish, it's either vegan or vegetarian or something so if i can say something too like i had uh, jambalaya earlier it was so good and i love spice i am i'm a northern boy but boy i got some southern roots in me somewhere because of the way i like spice and it was a delicious spice now unfortunately i know a lot of northern people who don't like a lot of spice unfortunately or can't handle the spice mm -hmm. um, Just stop talking to them man yeah, <laughs> we're as, not as close anymore because we're going to have meals without you. But uh, Do you have any, like, northern dishes of sorts? Or you able no. To? No, good. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. I will, I will say this. I think people, some of my dishes are particularly spicy. My jambalaya is pretty spicy. Um, Could have been spicier, to be fair. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I, so you, you curved it well. I, I, I put it. some hot sauce on mine when I hmm. eat it. But... Um, when people think of Louisiana food, they think, oh, it's just spicy, it's abrasive, and it's going to be super spicy. It's not really that. As, you know, even in Louisiana, you have hot sauce on the table because it's really about a layered and a complexity of spice. It's never mild. It's not going to taste like hot dish, guys. Sorry. Sorry. But it's not I really a... Dish. I went over to the cafe one day when I, I brought in a shame meal, and uh, I can put a camera on me while I'm talking about shame. Uh, I, I came over to the cafe and uh, asked for some ketchup. You should have seen this man's face. <laughs> he was not into it. I told you there was some hot sauce there. <laughs> Every dish I've had, too. You, you know, there's, you need some hot sauce, though? No, it's really about a complexity and layering your spices in, and like, in a, every step of the way. So I try not to make it overly spiced. There's something called sauce piquant, which translates to spicy sauce which is just spicy. <laughs> but other than that, I think people can manage. If you don't, if you don't like spicy food, sorry. Get, yeah, a, I mean, get like a cheeseburger. Or expand your palate a little bit. You know? Expand it. Yeah. Expand yeah. it. We need that like, culture here. Especially mm -hmm. like your jumbo, like your gumbo is like spicy, but like not like burning. It's yeah. no. like a it's flavorful. flavorful spicy. And Very that's flavorful. like yeah, that's the goal, is not to like make you hate yourself because you took a <laughs> bite, but be like, mm, I need to drink a beer. I found if I have a bite every two minutes back here, I, like, I still just have a nice spice on my, my palate, it's great. Yeah. I've, I've stretched this dish for quite a ways. And yeah. that praline is calling. <laughs> you can hey, say can whatever you want. You know, one thing we've not really talked about, uh, I, I know Gabe was up here, but theater community, like, how hard it must be, right? Um, can you can you say if anything about the, uh, the the service people on the front lines of our artistic community that are sitting at home and not, you know, there, there's not work for these people, and we haven't really talked about it a whole lot. Yeah, it's tough. Reach out to your friends who are performers. Daylin, I love Daylin. Oh, I that Lizzie Daylin. show. I, I love you, Daylin. She, she was great, and D D and Lizzie, and she was in. Hedwig, when we produced it last time, she's just got such a powerful voice. And you, you're so confident and beautiful voice. I admire it. I, yeah. When I try to sing on stage, I'm like, oh, God. Me too. <laughs> well, you're better at hiding it than me. <laughs> um, no, it's been, it's been rough. 
Uh, they produced a holiday show at the Playhouse. I should plug that. Uh, Nick and, worked and on hey, it. And hey, while we're at it, uh, Christina Stroop Manchester is going to come up here and do a little holiday tunes. Oh, great. Uh, red party. We have not decided on a date because that's just how my head has been working lately. And she's in that show, and it's mm -hmm. just a, m a mix of holiday music that will warm your heart. So you can go to the Playhouse website and. and that you can link in there, and I think you just have to donate something, like at least a dollar, and you can watch it. And it's not too long, but it's live performance filmed and just beautiful music, wonderful singers. So check it out. It's if amazing that you're able to do stuff like that still too, just like we are streaming this mm -hmm. to be able to stream plays and performances. You gotta you know? do what you gotta do. That's right. I uh, 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 one last note on that though. Uh, I'm working with the Playhouse on this stream with Christina, and they're gonna offer up a couple of season passes huh? for whatever season. We, <laughs> you know, who knows when that's gonna return, but uh, you know, keep them in mind and, and keep the artists in mind is, is kind of the goal here. So yeah. if you're a, a heavy donator on the, the Christina episode, you might get a couple of passes. Hey. Which I also know, I don't know, this isn't public knowledge yet, but Renegade is working on like a 24 hour monologue kind of performance that I offered to write something for. So I, d I think that's coming up early January. So there's yes. some people are producing stuff. Uh, just we're all gonna do it safely from a distance for now and everybody get vaccinated <laughs> and then we can all gather again. Keep your six, keep your six. Whenever those are available. Um, yeah. They just approved two more. I got a notification from yes. CNN, but you know. One's on its way. Facts aren't real anymore, it, so. It's, uh, it'll take some time here. We gotta be patient I'm, and. Uh, yeah, I'm see. healthy and not a frontline worker, so I believe I'm at the back of the line. Yeah, much so, uh, respect for I'll be staying away, guys. But come see Gumbo Boy. Oh, so yummy! Order from Gumbo Boy! Mm, you know I am. Oh. And the uh, dessert, like that caramel butter, it is so, like, fragile and it just breaks apart in your mouth so well. Like, you look at it at first, you're thinking like hard caramel, mm. but that combination of butter and Yeah, it's caramel. kind of a crumbly kind oh, of texture. It is to die for. Yeah. $20. Yeah, what else? You don't even have thing? to feel bad about yourself. <laughs> you spent 20 bucks at McDonald's. And Ooh, 20 bucks at McDonald's. Well, we really appreciate you donating the meal to us tonight. Yeah. Um, so good, thank you. Thanks so for forming. Good. The salad was good too. I made the vinaigrette myself. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that really good vinaigrette. <laughs> My man. Uh, with the fresh greens and yeah. Yeah, oh, thanks down. for uh, having me up here. Let me talk. Thanks for the Thank food. you. <laughs> I'm gonna go sit back over there and watch some more music. <laughs> this All has right. been great hey. to watch something. I'll pretend that I'm here. You're doing great. <laughs> Bye. Oh, are we doing a keys tune? I think I'm gonna try to rap now. Okay, let me... Uh, a camera thing. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> so I also wrote this song three days ago. <laughs> No, maybe a week ago. But I'm really excited because like these kinds of moods, I got George, I got Nick, I got Nick, I got Joe. Chrissy? Chrissy. Chrissy. Chrissy from Lincoln Park, the art teacher. Amazing. I got a really nice group of people, so I'm just gonna be super vulnerable and pretend that no one else is watching. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and rap for you. This is also the first time I've um, performed live with the keyboard, so that's fun. I'm just gonna get into it and stop talking. <laughs> get it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going round and round, hope I'm not too loud, loud, but I gotta know now, gotta know now. What's happening to all of you? I'm losing all my faith, too. Feels like the world is shutting down, down. No time for all these shitty sounds, sounds. Going through one ear and out the other. Trying not to blow my cover Of being okay, no, I'm not okay, no, not today 
Feels like I'm being brave, but I'm filled with the sad rage that I can't keep inside. I can't believe myself this time. I'm losing, <laughs> losing my mind inside. Can't keep a smile this time. Can't wait to start a garden. No, it shouldn't be too hard in a warm greenhouse. I'll feel kind of fuzzy inside. I'll begin running to feel alive. I'll lock myself in. Can't wait to begin this growing season. I'll make sure I'm alone. Those people scare me until my flowers grow into the city and of the loved ones I haven't seen in eight weeks. Then to all the new people I meet, what a treat! The new people to me feels pretty different. I'm used to my apartment and all that's in it, but I'll still have my freakouts. I'll punch up pretty walls and show. Sometimes I'll even pout like I have a two-year-old mind. I can't believe myself this time I'm losing my mind inside Can't keep a smile this time I can't keep a smile this time <laughs> wow. Thanks, guys. I wrote that about COVID. <laughs> that was beautiful. That felt very special. Thanks to this keyboard. I love this keyboard, especially when I'm drunk. I'm just like. Bleep. And it worked. <laughs> Having not plugged it in, like, sweet. <laughs> Emily C. has donated. Does that mean Emily? Emily, we fucking killed our finals today. Yeah. Yes! I think it hasn't been <laughs> graded, but thank you, Emily. Kudos to everyone doing school during these times, particularly teachers. Shout out Chrissy. And Nick. And Nick? I, I'm so sorry, I didn't know. Sorry. <laughs> Chrissy and Nick. <laughs> Chrissy and Nick. Chrissy and Nick. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> All right.
sky. I dig that. I, I really enjoyed that during your warm up. What? Tell me about that. A uh, tornado? Oh my goodness. I kind of went through this thing in the summer, kind of like a teenager does. I felt like a teenager this summer. And I got my nose pierced while it really good. Kind of like those, those vibes where you're like, I'm super, super not into feeling regular. I want to be punk. Yeah, something different. <laughs> uh, switch it up a little bit sometimes. No, but I've been listening to a lot of classic rock, and that's kind of what inspired me. So, yeah. <laughs> so I made that whole thing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's very like CBG. What is it? It's very punk. Yeah, punk. Yeah, like, I love that shit. Should we do another punk one? Yeah, that, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I just write songs and I don't know what they're about until like a year later. But I know what this one's about. Is that, are you satisfied with this answer? Yes. Okay, I swapped <laughs> it out. <laughs> That's what you're gonna get. <laughs> so this song's called Viz B and I'm totally making it acoustic because why the hell not? I wrote this like when I was just getting back from studying abroad in Sweden and Visby is the biggest or Visby is a city in the biggest island in Sweden. So if you go there, it, it's called Gotland. If you go to Gotland, you'll see these like rocks like this and they kind of look like if you go to Greece, like they're white like that, but they're just like statues right on the beach and you're like, what the Ooh. heck? But they're literally shaped. Are they carved or just like a monolith? What? Are they carved or is it just like a? It's literally the wind and the waves. Yeah. And so it's 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 phenomenal. It's amazing. It's like nothing else like it. So I wrote this song called Visby, and I wrote, talk about the rocks, but it's also a lot about my anxiety and all that. So I like to connect those environments with the singing. Yeah. So. If you ever have a chance, go to Visby. It's amazing.
rock shaped, rock shaped by wind and waves, wind and waves, forming little caves, little caves. Rock shaped by wind and waves, forming little caves where we will meet, where we, 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 we. Rock shaped by wind and waves, forming little caves where. question about George's fancy chair. Ooh. Yeah. I saw this drummer roll in with no drum kit and thought, that man is a fucking genius. <laughs> I always have a seat no matter where I go. But tell me about it. So what is a cajon? So a cajon is a box drum, as you can see, that is hollow um, and produces um, percussion sounds because of it. Now. The history of the Cajon goes back thousands of years, technically, uh, to times of slavery, where music was actually banned. The people, the slaves during the day, they would be working, uh, enslaving away, and they have like fruit boxes and stuff, and then at night, they would tip it over on its side and, and play percussion sounds because of it, you know? And as with most drums, they go back for for a far, far away, a long, long time ago. So this specific cajon, however, is made by a dear friend of mine. Uh, his name is Aaron Tafoya, and his business is Empowered Percussion. Yes, Empowered Percussion. Did you hear that? I am or E E M. Uh, e M. Okay. Empowered. So um, crazy story. He started his business in 2011, and. It must have been a few years later, I went to a show in Menominee, Wisconsin. And it was uh, during spring break, you know, Wisconsin style. I was a little younger, it's kind of a party school, and I was like, yeah, this is gonna be fun, spring break, Wisconsin style, let's get it. And it's a benefit concerts for a good cause, let's do it. Well, spring break in college a lot of times means no one's around. <laughs> There's especially someplace warmer, so it's a little bit of a ghost town. However, the show was great. Uh, there was a lot of great vendors. And I roll up into this place, getting ready to perform with my good buddy, Corey McCulley. Uh, shout out to him to get me playing music, man. Um, anyways, I'm going through all the vendors and I come across this guy like with a cajon stand. And like most people don't even know what these things are. So a random show, Menominee, Wisconsin, my boy Aaron Tafoya selling cajons and we got him on stage. We played a double cajon set. And ever since then, we've uh, kept in touch, and um, he's inspired me to be a better drummer, which is a lot of his business message, you know, like, um, drumming releases endorphins and helps you, like, get into a almost meditative state, and uh, he's all about empowering one another, and together, you know, through drumming. Um, His tools so. have been built out of necessity, you know? We, yes. we look at it as cultural kind of things, but we need that. Exactly, exactly. So this is one of his uh, newest and greatest contour cajones. Um, I just, I can't, I can't say enough good things about this guy. So uh, I will try to post a link to his site if you want to see what he has available for different drums, kind of read up on him. Uh, he has all different styles. He got lap cajones and a lot of different styles. Is uh, it a pretty friendly instrument to get into? So. I think so, because again, you start off by sitting on it. Yeah. We all need to sit, you know? And for me, like, I may not be the, the tightest drummer. I may not be able to keep the tightest beats and, and stay in time. But, <gasps> but drumming for me is a lot of feeling and, and, and uh, experiencing it. So I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, young and old and, uh, you know, novice to professional, you can get yourself into this drum. And it's, it has all these different sounds of bass sounds. And there's a little snare on the inside. What's and, on the side, George? And then, you know, you get real crazy on the side. I'm going to turn my back, but there is some, uh, <laughs> some built-in congas here. What? You got a little one over here.
plethora of different sounds, I'd say, depending on how you hit it, where you hit it, and you know, you got fingertips, you got your heel, you got your palm, you can put a little pressure on the front. So it's cajon, C-A-J-O-N. You don't want to bang on your cajones, as I always say. You want to bang on the cajon. <laughs> and, <laughs> I feel like it's getting really popular over the last uh, 10 years. Um, I remember taking percussion in like elementary school, middle school, took a break in high school, and it was uh, a performance uh, by Trevor Hall and his drummer at the time. Yeah, Trevor Hall. Wow. Yeah, his, his drummer at the time. Um, <laughs> I'm blanking on his name, Chris Deal maybe? No. Uh, anyways, he, I, he was playing a setup with a cajon with you know, 20 other percussion instruments, kind of like my boy Ricardo does. Uh, and he basically inspired me to play drums again. Like that inst this instrument it relived or regained a passion for percussion. So uh, throughout the years, I've been able to play with a lot of wonderful artists uh, locally. And uh, it was a blessing to come across Lila during this COVID times and be able to play music and uh, get that therapeutic uh, release that I ever so need. So you guys, yeah. I literally texted George. I was like, I have a residency show in a week and I want you to play drums. And that's how it started. <laughs> residency show tell me about that at cedar lounge and oh, then yes. we just started doing it and i'm drinking an earth rider superior pale how fitting Hell oh how yeah. fitting mm. and uh peter knutson was up here playing guitar i think the first time we we had maxi uh child's trio and they'll be playing again tomorrow so tune in again tomorrow day. Child oh, trio. Yeah. definitely a treat i want to see i wonder how cajon would you know, work into that style. That'd be interesting. So, it, you know, and that's another thing with rhythm and drums. I mean, yes, I'm missing a couple cymbals, which you can add to your setup, but you can really play with anything. I've played uh, with country bands and, and a reggae band and, uh, like, folky bands. And, I mean, definitely have a... Punk I, bands. I, I've done little hip-hop things, you know? like it, You're yeah. invited to every party, and you just bring a chair. Well, because it's yeah. George. That's the shit. <laughs> it's not I mean, the... It, it is the cajon, but it's George. Aw, yes. sure. The cajon and the cajones. Can I give a quick shout-out to Warehouse Productions? Yeah! <laughs> Thank you. Nick and Joe, man, you can just see the setup. This is the best setup I've ever played on. We've got some great cameras. Hey, videos. you know, without without an audience in here and excessively intoxicated people that aren't the musicians, uh, Nick's bringing out some pretty fun microphones. So for me, just having headphones on here is like I already win. If this doesn't even live stream, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I I, I am winning. Uh, during the sound checks and stuff earlier, playing on I don't even know the price of these microphones. It's out of my price range, and just to beautiful. experience some beautiful sound is, uh, oh man, it's inspiring. It's been a minute, right? Absolutely. It's been a minute for all of us. So this next song is totally a COVID song again. It's almost like you had a bunch of time on your hands I had a lot the last few months hands. to write songs. Lots of something. time on my hands. <laughs>
Thanks. It's always weird to play that one because it's called There's No One and There's People Here. And usually when I'm practicing, there's no one and there, there's many here. We got a lot of support. And we're so thankful. much support. So thankful for anyone who yeah. you know, comes to our show, listens to us, and just yeah. being a part of our lives. You know, We really appreciate that. Yeah. So I always kind of feel silly when this says there's no one. But you know, it's kind of working through your feelings a little bit. And uh, it makes you appreciate when you are with someone. Yeah, who the heck ever feels alone? That's crazy, right? because we normally play this one while she's playing guitar. Uh, but, oh gosh, this is a song for the piano. <coughs> <laughs> this uh, transition is brought to you by all the craft beers I've enjoyed so far tonight. <laughs> uh, Earth Rider, uh, I had Castle Danger, and also I had a little Ben Paddle. So, appreciate all your guys' brews. I wish it was inspired by Laura. Love you, Laura. But it's not. Love all the cylinders and now everyone part of Superior Song. song. Shut that goddamn 
Taylor, she knows what's up. Not all Minnesota people. Come on, we're talking generalizations. All right. Boom. Confidential. Sure. You better talk to Maggie about that story. <laughs> what? So what are you? What are you finishing up school for? Social work. And goal being? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good place to be at. I mean, okay. So like, my goal also is to have like a day job that is lets me have weekends off, honestly, so I can do this. Yeah. That's I know important. That's, Silly, but I want but I want both, and so I'm I gonna try to be a working <laughs> artist. <laughs> we all need that to be the case, otherwise we don't get to hear you. So yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Find that. Sweet. All right, let's do two more. Okay. We kind of did them all. Not all of them. If you want to just make up songs on the spot, you know, we're, <laughs> we're <laughs> work it. Maybe do some Def Leppard covers. <laughs> do you guys know any anything from uh, Pyromania? Ooh, ooh, you know that's a little before my time. <laughs>
Never happened. Thanks. Sorry to end it. Sorry to have a, such a sad one. I'll try. Got to end a little. Hey, did okay. you mention the note that I passed you? I love you, Samer. I'm gonna keep that one. Okay. I. I'm in between like mentioning the comments out yes. loud and giving you notes. So. I love it. Cool, 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 cool. I've been staring at him like cute. I love you too. Well, <laughs> should we? Should we end with that one? Yeah. I like the face that you guys are making. <laughs> so, so you, you, you do it. You do it. <laughs> you. It's your song. I talk too much. Uh, well, I think I had my fair share of talking, but I was just going to say about this song that uh, this is actually the first song Lila and I ever played together. Yeah! Because <laughs> five so years yeah. ago, uh, <laughs> through mutual friends, we ended up doing an open mic together at UMD. It was one of the my first times. My freshman time, year, I was 18. One of the first times I think you played uh, a live show, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Well, I did high school stuff, but my first, Shoot. like, woo! Open mic, you know, a couple mm -hmm. minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, she asked uh, if I could jump on the cajon. Weird, kind of a weird. Full circle thing, but uh, so weird. Uh, this one, the first songs we play together, and uh, I don't know if you got anything else to say about this uh, lovely song. Well, it's the first song I ever wrote, and I wrote it when I was 12 years old. Oh dang!
I think we got one more inside of us. Beautiful. Thanks. I think it's time for I don't really care and then we're done. You said 12 years old? Yeah. Were you playing guitar then? Or you I were mean, just I don't know. It's just like a minor shit. I, I still play know. that. <laughs> you know. I'm, I've gotten a lot better guitar. There's three finger fingers picking. involved in that chord. I, I remember an A minor, maybe. <laughs> Let's do I don't really care and then call it a night. All right, to end the night, we're going to do a little bit of a punk song. Little bit. Very <laughs> exquisite punks. A wee bit. So let your hair down, George. Hold on. Hold on, George. <laughs> Mine stuck because it's not That's healthy and it gets stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it's really <laughs> stuck in there. <laughs> Try saying Praline with that accent. Praline? <laughs> Robot! <laughs> Is that about accurate, Bobby? <laughs> Thank you to Warehouse Productions, Nick, sound guy. Where? Where house? I was house. real drunk when I was naming it. Couldn't <laughs> find the house and was just. Inspired. I was really drunk when I just said it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all right. If you stop looking at me, I've seen you twice. But it's never up to speed. It's like you're waking up. I don't, really care. I don't really care. I don't really care. I don't really care. Nothing is there. Nothing is there. Cause there's always something else that I come up with in my mind. And I would tell you what they are, but that would not be very kind. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. If you stop looking at me, I've seen you twice. Child's Trio, 8 o'clock. Uh, it'll be a quartet. We'll actually have Jeff Peabody on drums as well as uh, John Hino on keys. Tune in, 8 o'clock. We'll be raising money for Zeitgeist and these musicians that need some help. Thank you! Thanks again, everyone. Appreciate you.